SpaceX made a dangerous bet. Hello friends, welcome back to Engineering Today, and we're back with some latest space updates. It began with fire. The explosion ripped through the Massey test site during Ship 36's static fire. So something had to change. Engineers, technicians, Elon himself, everyone felt the pressure. Suspicion fell on the fuel transfer tube. It carries ultra-cold liquid methane and oxygen. Fuels chilled to the point of frostbite in seconds. That's what feeds the 33 Raptor engines at the base of the Super Heavy booster. And when the original design faltered, the results were catastrophic. So they tore it apart and rebuilt it. SpaceX posted on X, installing the redesigned fuel transfer tube into the first next generation Super Heavy booster. Roughly the same size as the first stage of a Falcon 9 rocket, the new transfer tube is responsible for channeling cryogenic fuel from Super Heavy's main tank to its 33 Raptor engines and will enable faster, more reliable flip maneuvers and the ability for simultaneous engine startup. The new design isn't just a patch, it's a leap. Before, the engines had to start in waves. One row would ignite, then another and another. Delays in ignition led to thrust imbalance, engine failures, and dangerous instability during liftoff. Now, all engines fire at once. The full might of the booster, nearly 10,000 tons of thrust, unleashed in a single moment. But more power means more stress. The redesigned tube must survive cryogenic chills and furnace-level heat, high-pressure flows, and intense shaking, all without leaking. Because one leak? It's not just a fault, it's game over. Elon put it bluntly, it's more of a fuel header tank than a transfer tube. Has to be very buff, as it's subject to extreme loads and a single leak would be game over. The tube is built to support Raptor 3 engines, which crank out 280 tons of thrust each, a jump from the previous 230. That 22% boost will push every part of the system harder, and the tube has to hold. But fuel isn't just about fire, it's also about control. That same pipe will manage delicate landing flips and throttles. The faster and cleaner those maneuvers, the better the chances of bringing that rocket back for reuse. The Super Heavy Block 3 booster uses a single massive fuel transfer tube to feed all 33 Raptor engines. Just to give you a rough perspective how tall and gigantic this transfer tube is, you can put a Falcon 9 rocket into a V3 Super Heavy booster. In fact, SpaceX says that Block 3 features a substantially larger transfer tube connecting the engines and the methane tank. This allows faster, simultaneous engine start and quicker flip maneuvers, but it also concentrates all the fuel flow into one long line, creating several critical failure points. A single leak or rupture anywhere in it would starve every engine of methane at once. SpaceX's own data show how disastrous a leak can be. An oxygen methane leak on a recent Starship flight built up pressure and blew the stage apart. In practice, losing fuel flow means immediate engine shutdown or explosion, so even a small breach can be mission-ending. Also, the tube carries liquid methane under high pressure, along with liquid oxygen. Methane is extremely flammable and easily ignites, and it forms explosive mixtures with oxygen. Any leak releases a huge cloud of cold fuel vapor that can ignite or even explode, and accidental methane's oxygen contact can cause detonations. Moreover, the fuel itself weighs thousands of tons, and under high acceleration and vibration slams against the tube walls with enormous force. The tube, which is roughly 3 meters across and 37 meters long, must be very thick and strong to resist buckling or bursting. Elon Musk emphasized it must be very buff, subject to extreme loads, meaning any tiny weld defect or crack could propagate under stress. In practical terms, the pipe walls must withstand high internal pressure 
and the weight of sloshing fuel while the rocket pulls many Gs. A fatigue crack or impact during flight could split it open. During the flip and other rapid maneuvers, liquid in the tube can slosh and create vapor pockets. If a gas bubble reaches the engines, it chokes off fuel flow. Starship tests have shown that improper fuel settling can abruptly cut engine pressure. In this design, the long downcomer means there's more fuel to move and more chance for unstable flow or trapped gas, risking engine flameouts at critical moments. This exact configuration is novel. Building a perfect 37-meter cryogenic pipeline is a tremendous manufacturing challenge. Every valve, valve, and joint must be flawless. With only one main feed line, there's no redundancy. Because it's new, unexpected issues like stress concentrations or thermal mismatches may only appear under real launch conditions. Any tiny pinhole or misalignment could leak cryogenic methane with no backup system to catch it. Even a very small fuel leak can have huge consequences. In short, this single giant fuel line operates at extreme pressures, temperatures, and forces, so any failure is effectively game over. Meanwhile, at the edge of Starbase, something else is rising. A new air separation unit, tucked beside the shoreline on a 1.66-acre plot, will make its own oxygen and nitrogen. No more 200 delivery trucks clogging launch delays. Instead, gas flows straight into the rockets, with county officials keeping close watch on how SpaceX protects the nearby dunes and wildlife. In the background, Block 3 ships, like 39 and 40, are racing toward the finish line. Stacking schedules hint at a possible liftoff before the year ends. But timelines slip. New designs bring new problems. Every launch window is a gamble. Over at McGregor, 21 Raptor engines have screamed through test stands, each one a heartbeat of what's to come. But one question remains. Will the new tube hold when everything is on the line? On the other hand, something big just happened behind the scenes at Blue Origin, something that brings us one step closer to the edge of space. For the first time, Blue Origin has successfully built and attached the massive fuel tanks to the main engine section of their Blue Ring spacecraft. Think of these tanks as the stomach of a rocket, holding the fuel that gives it power to move. But this isn't just about connecting parts. This moment unlocks their unique two-part engine system, designed to give Blue Ring more control and flexibility in orbit. That's not all. The team didn't stop at just one. They've already built six more tanks, and five more are nearly done. Each one is being prepped for a future journey to be part of the next generation of Blue Ring missions. But what happens when the full spacecraft is finally assembled? And what do you think about how it stacks up against SpaceX? Personally, I think SpaceX is still far ahead. They don't just push boundaries, they erase them. SpaceX dares to imagine what others don't even consider. To me, they carry the true spirit of humanity's drive to reach beyond Earth. And that was a beautiful journey. Thanks for watching. Please subscribe for more videos like this. Hit the like button if you find the video interesting. And kindly provide your valuable feedback in the comment section. This will help us to improve.